Hello Grade 12s, and welcome to another video from the Answer Series. This is the second video in the chapter Work, Energy and Power. In the previous video, we learned how to calculate work using force and displacement vectors. Now we're going to have a look at objects experiencing those forces in three different positions. We'll use free body diagrams to be able to identify the forces clearly and then we'll calculate the work done by each force acting on each object. There are three possible positions that we're familiar with. Firstly, the object can be placed on a horizontal plane and can move from left to right as shown with those forces acting upon the object. The object could be suspended vertically, moving up or down, held by a cable, a rope or a string. And then we have the object on an inclined plane moving up or down that slope with those forces acting upon it. Let's look at the object on the horizontal plane a little bit more closely. We have that object moving from left to right, shown by this delta x vector here. And then we have a number of forces acting upon it. There's always gravitational force downwards and the normal force acting upwards. The angle between the gravitational force and delta x is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and therefore the gravitational force does zero work. The same can be said for the normal force. Because of the 90 degree angle, the normal force does no work. The applied force is the force that's actually causing the object to move from left to right. There's an angle theta in this case between the applied force and delta x. So we take that theta, we plug it into the equation cosine of theta multiplied by delta x multiplied by the force will give us the amount of work done by the applied force. The friction opposes that movement and the angle between the friction and the delta x is 180 degrees and so therefore the friction ends up doing negative work. You can see these calculations being used in the example at the bottom of the screen. There's a 50 Newton force moving an object total distance of 6 meters but there's an angle of 30 degrees between the two vectors and so the 50 Newton force does positive work of 259,81 joules. The friction of 8 newtons is going to oppose that motion of 6 meters. The angle between the two vectors is 180 degrees, and so you end up with a negative amount of work done by the frictional force. In the vertical plane, the object could be moving up or down. In the diagram here, the delta y vector is shown downwards, and so the gravitational force acting in the same direction means that the angle between the two vectors is zero degrees and the gravitational force does positive work. The tension in the cable or whatever is acting on that object is in the opposite direction and so the angle between the tension and delta y is 180 degrees and the tension does negative work. The frictional force also upwards, typically air friction, it's also at an angle of 180 degrees to delta y, and so the friction will also do negative work. If the object is moving upwards, then the frictional force will end up being downwards, which means that the work done by the frictional force will remain negative. However, this time, it's the turn of the tension to act in a positive direction, and the tension will now do positive work because the angle between the two vectors is zero degrees. The gravitational force, still downwards, is now at 180 degrees to the delta y, and so the gravitational force will do negative work. On the inclined plane, the gravitational force is usually divided into two components, parallel and perpendicular to the slope. The perpendicular component does no work when that object is sliding up or down the slope, but you do sometimes need it to calculate the frictional force using the coefficient of friction. 
If we look at the object moving up the slope, we can compare it to the object moving down the slope. The delta x vector shown here shows us the object is moving upwards, and we see that the applied force is acting in the same direction as the delta x, and therefore the angle between the two is zero degrees, and the applied force does positive work. The gravitational force is acting in the opposite direction. The angle between them is 180 degrees, and the gravitational force does negative work. The friction, also acting down the slope, is at 180 degrees, and so therefore the friction does negative work. If the object is moving downwards, and again we can see the delta x vector shown there, it is now the turn of the gravitational force component parallel to the slope to do positive work because the angle between them is zero degrees. The applied force, acting in the opposite direction to the direction of movement, does negative work, and the friction, as always, does negative work. Another way of thinking about the work done by the gravitational force on the inclined plane is to compare the vectors for the object moving vertically to the direction of the gravitational force. So if the object is moving upwards, this h vector demonstrates that, then the gravitational force is moving in the opposite direction, and so the angle between them is 180 degrees, and the gravitational force does negative work. If, however, the object is moving downwards, then the gravitational force is in the same direction. The angle between them is zero degrees, and the work done by the gravitational force is positive. Finally, we can have a look at the angle between the gravitational force and delta x itself. If the object is moving upwards, delta x in that direction, and the gravitational force downwards, then the angle between the two vectors is greater than 90 degrees. Cosine of an angle greater than 90 degrees is negative, and so therefore the gravitational force does negative work. If, however, the object is moving downwards, then delta x in that direction and the gravitational force in that direction, the angle between the two is less than 90 degrees. The cosine of an angle less than 90 degrees is positive, and so therefore the work done by the gravitational force is positive. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.